How's it going? I've had a lot of people ask me, how do I have such a clear screen on my live scope? And I've been using this thing for years and years, even Panoptics before that. I'm gonna show you exactly how I dial my unit in, the standard settings that I start the day with, and then how I adjust throughout the day to keep that really clean and clear screen. So what you can see on my screen here is I'm at 29.7 feet of water right in the middle of the screen, a couple feet off the bottom. This is my jigging rod right now. I've got um, just a small jig down there with a minnow head. And then on the left, what you're gonna see here is a jig and a minnow that I have a little bit higher up in the water column. Stuff that you see directly below me on the screen here, those are small fish at about 16 feet down. So here's the settings that I use. If I start at menu, the gain, so I usually keep my gain around 65%, and then what I do is I really like the adjustments on the screen. Right now you can see I'm at 68. I could actually probably back this off down to 66% right now, just given that I can see both of them. That's step number one, adjust your gain so you can see both of your baits pretty clearly, but you don't want them to be over blasted because then you get a lot of screen clutter as well. Number two, what I do for my depth setting is I try to make it so that the floor of the water column is just above my settings on the bottom of the screen. Some people will hide those. I like them on the screen so I can adjust them. So 35 feet with where I'm at right now actually works out pretty dang well. So the next setting, if you go to menu, sonar setup, appearance, the color scheme that I really like is blue. I find that you can see the most difference in the colors with the blue setting. A lot of people use amber. I'm not a fan of it. With the amber color scheme, it's a little bit harder for me to really quickly and clearly identify different objects, but you will be able to see more detail in a specific fish if you have it dialed in and you're on amber. But my go-to is if you scroll down to get to the blue. Color gain, you can see I have cranked to 100%. I fluctuate this anywhere between 95% and 100%. You can see if I go down what the difference is there. There's not a ton right now, but if I crank it up to 100, that's where I like it right now. The reason why I like it at a higher setting is because it allows me to have my gain lower while still being able to see my baits. Looks like we've got a fish coming across the water column right now. So you can kind of see that right there at 24 feet down, which is kind of cool. So let me show you what color gain actually does. If I zoom in on my baits down here and I go back in the menu, sonar setup, appearance, color gain, look at my jig that I'm going to move right now. Look at that guy as I move my color gain down, right? So what you're seeing is the intensity of the jig go down, right? So if I wanted to have this say at default, which is gonna put it at 50%, I have to turn my gain up more to get more confidence in knowing where my other bait is on the left hand side because if i put my gain back down it could be easy to miss that left bait so i like to put color gain right around that 95 to 100 percent you're going to see the intensity increase this allows you to reduce that gain reduce the noise clutter on the screen while also being able to see your targets a lot better Next up, trails. I leave the trails off. I'm not a fan of the trails. Trails are where, I'll show you here. If I do uh, slow trails so that you can see it. So it's when an object is moving, there's a pink line behind it. So you can see that the object has moved. When you have a lot of things happening on your screen, this can be overwhelming, especially at night or early in the morning when you have the bugs moving up or down in the water column. I and usually watching the screen so I can see when things are moving. So I prefer to keep those trails off. Bottom fill, I like off as well. I, I find that if I have it on, sometimes it doesn't accurately detect the bottom and I'll miss some of those bottom roaming fish. So I leave that off. 
If we go to layout, I like the grid off just to keep it clean. It's, to me, not that big of a deal if it's four feet away or five feet away. Um, I could see in open water potentially when you're maybe got it on the trolling motor and you're trying to cast to it, but I like to have it off. Scroll history doesn't really matter to me, so I leave that off and then on-screen controls. As you know, I like those settings across the bottom of the screen. Noise reject, so this depends on how much stuff's in your water column. I prefer it on high. If you have your noise reject on high, it is gonna make the processor of your chart plotter work the most. So if you have a 73, an Ecomap 73, if you have an Ecomap 93, you may notice noticeable lag when you set the hook or when you detect a bite, you can feel it significantly before you see it on the screen. When I say significantly, I'm talking like fractions of a second, but that's because the processor has to work harder for the noise reject. I have a Garmin Ecomap 8610 XSV, which has their fastest processor in it that Garmin makes. And so I leave this on high and I don't really notice any lag at all. If I were to turn it off, you can see there's just a lot of that noise and clutter in the water column. If you don't mind a little bit of lag, go ahead and throw it on high, but play around with it. Maybe you want a little bit more sensitivity on the screen um, and less delay in when you jig or pull up and see that reaction. That's the setting that's doing that for you. TVG, this is the time varying gain. So I leave this almost always on low. The reason for it is there's usually is a lot of noise up around where the transducer is because the beam strength is so strong. As it's emitting, it can see some of that stuff in the water. So if I were to have this off, you can see all of those beams shooting down. I prefer not to have that. And so what I do is I put TVG on low. If you crank this up, what you're gonna notice is that when you're dropping your jig down, you're gonna have a little bit harder time to see that jig in that area below the transducer while it's close to it, because as it gets further away, you're actually gonna amplify that signal, which allows it to clean up that top part of the screen. Now, as I'm moving around the water, either hole hopping on ice or in the boat, once I get my range set up accurately, the three main settings that I adjust to keep that clean, clear screen is my gain. The gain control on the screen I find is critical with being able to adjust it on the fly because sometimes you need to adjust this five to 10 times an hour depending on how your water is adjusting as well. The second item is noise reject. If it's really clean and crystal clear water without a lot going on in it, I may adjust this down, which is gonna help remove any of those dead spots that become created once you turn that noise reject on high. And then the third setting, color gain. If I'm fishing in a weedy bottom, you don't want your color gain to 100%, otherwise it's gonna look like a solid bottom, solid red. You can adjust this down. This is where sometimes I go down to that 95, potentially even 90, but that's the other setting that I'll adjust depending on the weed structure that I'm on, or sometimes even rocks to help with seeing those fish hugging the bottom. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions on either any of the settings that I went through or even any of the ones that I didn't, or if there's another video similar to this that you'd like me to make. I know a lot of people right now are jumping into this technology, and if there's any way that I can be helpful, I'm more than happy to do that. I will leave you with this video here on the screen. Please make sure to check it out. It's gonna show you how I use LiveScope to hop around on the ice when I'm ice fishing. And then there's another video here that's recommended from YouTube. But thank you so much for watching and until next time, take it easy.